Hi everyone, welcome back to AI News. Today we have a special guest from Glendale. Good afternoon, everyone at home. I am Alex Balekian. I am running for Congress for California's 30th Congressional District. This district includes the cities of Glendale, Burbank, Hollywood, West Hollywood, Sunland, Tahunga, Hancock Park, Echo Park, Silver Lake. It's a very large area with a very uh, heterogeneous, varied group of people. And so I have been a lifelong resident of Glendale, California, and I am happy to represent all of my neighbors in the district. Your district is very left-leaning, like cons compared to even to the rest of the California. I mean, <laughs> it's close to Hollywood. Yeah. Can you imagine like the Burbank, all the like filming people there and now they're doing like LGBTQ like movies and they're like brainwash our children, all that kind of area. Yeah. There. yeah. What makes you want to stand up and uh, run for office this year? Um, so uh, several things. So first about your question about it being very left leaning. Uh, before Adam Schiff, so Adam Schiff is currently the representative, and he's yeah. a Democrat, and he's been there for 22 years. Before Adam Schiff came on, the person before him, James Rogan, was a Republican. Oh, okay. So up until about 1998, there was a Republican representing it. Uh, number two, the area, Glendale, Burbank, Hollywood, it's full of immigrants. Um, oh. And immigrants come to this country, my parents came to this country, and they actually registered as Republicans. Why? Because when you came to this country, the Republican Party meant, you know, about middle classes and small businesses and making something of yourself and working hard and not paying taxes. But most importantly, the government didn't run everything for you. Mm -hmm. And that is what the Democratic Party stood for. So when you say left leaning, there are a lot of people who are left leaning. However, it's not impossible. Um, because as I said, number one, immigrants tend to be harder working, they want lower taxes, and they want the government to stay out of their lives. But also, right now, with all the democratic policies that have ruined our state for the last 20 years, even the most consistent Democrats are starting to question their loyalty mm -hmm. to the party that did this to the state. Oh, especially Adam Schiff, which is your opponent, right? So Adam Schiff is, uh, he's not running, he's going to run for Senate for Dianne Feinstein's seat. So it's the oh. first time the seat has been open for 22 years. So it's me and I think about 12 Democrats running for the spot. So it's a large group of us trying to fill the spot. 12 wow. Democrats? 12 Democrats, yes. 12 Democrats and yes. one Republican? That is correct, yes. Wow. What? <laughs> well, uh, you talk about immigrants. Mm -hmm. so, uh, right now we have a immigrant crisis in our whole country, basically. Right. And uh, right now everything is extremely bad i my, my parents came from an immigrant background as well as you you heard we are all immigrant based correct oh, so yeah. uh what's your policy on immigration right now because i i talked to a lot of hispanic uh resident here mm -hmm. they're like we are very pro-immigrant i don't support trump because of his immigrant immigration policy and everything what's yours um so me personally i think Number one, right now, this, the state of our border, we have no border. It's just an open border. If you had a house, a house that you loved, would you leave the door open and unattended for anybody to come in? No, you wouldn't. So why do we do that to our country? It's not that you don't want guests. Mm -hmm. You want to bring people into your home, guests, neighbors, but you want to do it in a controlled fashion. You want to do it safely. So um, I, and I think if you talk to most immigrants, especially ones who are working hard. Um, we want a secure border. We want to be able to ask questions of the people who want to come in here. Same as Canada does, for example. Canada has a immigration system that is points-based. So you get points for having family here already. You get points if you speak the language, either English or French. You get points if you have certain skills. Um, let's say you have education with a degree, or let's say you are a carpenter or an electrician, and we need you know those uh, trades here. So they're able to pick and choose their immigrants to make their country richer culturally, but also to get them what they need, the talent that they need. So that is my policy on immigration. I think the majority of immigrants who come here want to work hard, want to make something of themselves. However, 
we there are people who do it legally mm -hmm. and wait in line, and we should not disrespect them by allowing an open border that just lets anybody in, not to mention criminals, not to mention traffickers, child traffickers, drug traffickers that bring in crime when we say, oh, I'm pro-immigrant. So we definitely need to secure that border. And I think we can do it if we have a points-based immigration system that lets in people who are going to be productive, respectful citizens. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's, it's kind of weird that you're saying that we should learn our immigration policy from Canada. But, <laughs> but uh, from my opinion, uh, immigration problem, the, the problem is the politician that's here. Because mm -hmm. the politician, like Adam Schiff, uh, kept telling the immigrants that we're going to give you free stuff. We're right. going to give you this uh, benefit. We're going to give you this. So from, uh, for example, my mother. When she comes to the States, oh. she's like, I want to work hard. I want to make money. I want to have a life here. I want to do this. I want to do that. But at the same time, she is like, oh, I, I want like, you know, government benefit too. Mm. Uh, so, <laughs> so that's why her friend is able to convince her to be like, hey, why don't you just vote for this Democrat? Yep. She's going to give you free stuff. That's yep. how uh, Judy Chu got elected. Right. That's how... Um, uh, Chuck Schumer and uh, Adam Schiff got elected. Yes. It's basically like free stuff for the people. Uh -huh. You live in Glendale for all these times. Do you, how do you see the changes from before Adam Schiff and now Adam Schiff? It, it is a large problem because the, the Democratic Party has been able to essentially buy people's votes yeah. by promising them, giving them free things, mm -hmm. free stuff. Um, and I'm not entirely against temporary help. There are people who come here, they want to work hard, they open a business, the business gets shut down because of COVID, the business fails. They need temporary help six months, one year to get back up on their feet and build themselves back up. I think everybody, all of us here probably have had times when we failed and we've had friends or family help us. So I think there is some role to temporary short-term help for people who then want to say, okay, I don't want this to be forever and I want to make something of themselves, myself. That is not what the Democrats are promising. The Democrats are creating slaves to government. Mm -hmm. And, you know, okay, get this money, but if you start working, we won't give you the money. So suddenly people don't want to start working because the government money will stop. Mm -hmm. But if you tell them this is going to be temporary, one year, get yourself ready. By the end of the year, you need a job. They say, okay, I'm going to get a job so that by the end of the year. One year. D depending. <laughs> d d depending. So some people need it shorter. Some people need it longer. So this is why you just kind of make a program that you can then tell the states, okay, you know, we have 50 different states. The communities are very different. You guys decide what works best for you. But I think everybody, especially people watching at home, if you've never failed in your life, I am jealous of you. Okay. I think all of us have failed. Um, and then so if you need help, I think good neighbors, we help each other. But the help should be temporary. But not government. So it, it so I think it, I think if I want help, it's going to be from church, mm -hmm. community, family member. Right. Not from government, because no one. Because once you give the power to the government, uh -huh. you're in his control. Right. You're in their control. And your family is in their control. Uh, but with church or your family member, mm -hmm. they're going to tell you. They're going to encourage you. They're going right. to be like, you can do better than this. You can be better. You need to work hard. Mm -hmm. you, I'm not going to help you forever. They gonna, trust me, they're going to repeat it every day. But the government, they want you to stay in there. Correct. And so what the, a plan that you could do, for example, is so the government doesn't give you the money directly. The government says, OK, let's set up local organizations. So in this place, for example, it would be a church. In another place, it would be a community center, depending. So that is why it shouldn't be a simple Washington is going to write you a check and then you're going to get a check every month. It should be, OK, we have money that we can give to local organizations to help out their communities and we will allow them to do it however they see fit to fit with their community because one size does not fit all. Okay. Uh, I, I, look at, I looked that up your uh, campaign website. Uh -huh. And uh, because we, this is a Christian uh, 
program. Mm -hmm. So what's your stance on abortion? Me as a doctor, I said, first, do no harm. Okay. So especially these late term abortions, I do not agree with because if the baby has a 60% chance of life yeah. and then at 26 weeks and then mom says, I don't want the baby. I think it is unethical for a physician to do an abortion at that time. Mm -hmm. Now, right now, the law of the land is a woman has the right until the baby, until it reaches viability. Okay. Viability, meaning it has a chance outside of mom. So right now it says, okay, before that chance in California, for example, mom can have an abortion, but after 24 weeks, okay, it, that have baby has a chance, mom should not have the right to abortion. So that is what Roe versus Wade said, okay? I think that's a reasonable for now. However, what I tell people is medical advances are getting so good mm -hmm. that by, in my lifetime, a baby will probably be viable at four weeks, mm -hmm. okay? So when people are saying, you know, uh, what do you think of abortion? Everybody, I think, now agrees if a baby can survive, you should not do an abortion. But that point will come sooner and sooner and sooner, probably in my lifetime. So my whole stance is abortions happen when pregnancies are unplanned. What we need to do is, number one, provide for birth control if a woman wants birth control so that she can prevent getting pregnant. But also, number two, more importantly, educate children that having children is a privilege. It's a responsibility. Uh -huh. It's not something that you should take lightly. And so having a family, having somebody that you love, for example, having sex and hold, you know, holding on to that until you find somebody that you love, teaching that kind of respectfulness, I think, to children will go much farther than having these discussions because, you know, we have 2 million unplanned pregnancies every year. That is a failure of pregnancy planning. So if we allow women who want it to have a birth control pill, for example, so they can prevent the pregnancy. Then you say, okay, that is how we fix the abortion problem because we'll prevent any unplanned pregnancies from happening. But you also give a lot of education to kids about abstinence, about, you know, respecting relationships and saying, okay, you know, pregnancies are something that should not be taken lightly. And if you're going to be having sex, we really need to discuss that it can result in having a child. And that is a privilege. It's not an accident. Uh, but from from my opinion, because we believe that every single stage of the pregnancy, mm -hmm. it, it's it starts from the beginning. Okay, in, in the beginning, mm -hmm. in inception, uh, there's life there. Right, and life is God given gift for the whole family. So we need to respect life. We don't create life, mm -hmm. so we don't have the ability. We shouldn't have the right to take away life. Right. Uh, what are your thoughts on that? So I. I think abortion is a terrible form of birth control. Uh -huh. I, I don't think that, you know, if a woman gets pregnant, again, I would try to focus on preventing that pregnancy. Preventing pregnancy. Preventing that pregnancy. Because number one, a woman, I know three women who have had abortions. And I don't think any woman goes into having an abortion with any positive, happy feeling. There is guilt. There is fear, there is anxiety, and I think a lot of criminalizing it will multiply those feelings. So I want to try to avoid but putting- shouldn't you weak criminalizing it? I'm sorry? Shouldn't we criminalizing it? Abortion. Yeah. I, I don't think the government should criminalize abortion. What about doc the doctors who perform the abortion? So again, I think it's unethical to do an abortion when the baby can survive outside of the womb. So late-term abortions for which, which is in the beginning. Now we can clone sheep. Correct. That means we can clone humans. Correct. <laughs> Any clump of cells. Correct. Outside of the womb can be can can be become the organism that they were made. Correct. So, it, so, so abortion doesn't make any sense to to in this uh, scientifically in this world right now. Correct. So that is why. I don't want to create criminals. I want to work towards avoiding the situation that gets people there in the first place. Yeah, I, I get you. But there's one thing, mm -hmm. uh, like like you said, you can uh, provide people like condoms or something like that mm -hmm. to preventing uh, pregnancy. Yep. But if you take a look in China, mm -hmm. okay. even though you 
like you spend the government spend a lot of money you go into the college you give people like the free condom you even put a box like free condom in the school no one take it they don't want it i think the thing is education the education for men mm -hmm. like if you want to do that marry her right tell a woman if you want to like have sex get married mm -hmm. you have to get married first then you can have sex you are not have sex before you get married then you're gonna have the the consequence mm -hmm. that you have to face we need to criminalize that because they know that's a punishment mm. because they don't see the thing very light like they have to know you killed your own child so i think that's a uh, discrimination for very young child that's just a basic common sense because that's a human you shouldn't kill a human you know there's another thing like those men are runs away mm -hmm. that's the most reason woman to get abortion mm -hmm. because there's no father in the home there's no and partner yeah yeah no partner this is, this is why as i was saying we should talk to children openly and let them know that this is a responsibility it's a privilege right yeah. there are people who want to have children who cannot have yes. children but my general approach to things i would like to address things in a positive fashion and okay. not in a negative fashion so for example if it's preventing the situation that creates all of this fear, anxiety, I would prefer doing that rather than arriving in a situation and dealing with it with a negative punishment, for example. Mm -hmm. So that is just my general approach to problems. Okay. Yeah. Is that how doctors look at patients? <laughs> Every, everybody's different, right? Okay. So we have, uh, we have leeway as how to, you know, um, uh, address a topic, a problem. Now there is standard of care, for example, you do things that's, that are standard of care, but you know, I, let's say as a surgeon, I would do an operation versus another surgeon would say, no, no, I would wait. I think we can do this without an operation. Those are two separate opinions. Uh -huh. Um, and it's not that it's right or wrong. It's just that person's opinion. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. Were you, uh, for the vaccine mandate? And when the California, because you you were in the medical field, oh, uh, how 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 did you handle the vaccine mandate during that time? So I, the short answer is I do not support vaccine mandates. Again, okay. me as a physician, first do no harm, second patient autonomy should not be violated. Okay. So me as a physician, if I tell somebody, you know, um, you know, Ethan, you have this problem, you really should get surgery. Yes, the surgery is dangerous, but if you don't get the surgery eventually you will, you know, die. So I really think you should get this surgery. Mm -hmm. And you say, I don't know. I don't think so. I will take my chances. I'm not going to do the surgery. That is fine. My role is to explain to you mm -hmm. the risks and benefits of both sides so that you can make an educated choice. Mm -hmm. I don't make the choice for you. Mm -hmm. Okay. That is not what I should do as a doctor because you should have your autonomy. I am here to teach you about the two yes or no, but it's the decision is yours in the end. That is how we should have done it. We should not have forced this vaccine on people, uh -huh. right? So yeah, w you know, I got the first set of vaccines because, you know, I am an intensive care physician. Um, and so the vaccine, the first sets, vaccine versus no vaccine, in my opinion, the clinical trials, they showed that they lowered your chance of death mm -hmm. a lot. Great. When the, um, booster studies came out oh. booster versus no booster there was no difference so i said <laughs> i said okay vaccine versus no vaccine yes i'll take the vaccine that was my personal choice and i took it when they said okay now you have to have the booster i said booster against no booster there's no difference i don't want the booster because both groups did the exact same they said no you have to do it so i delayed it delayed it delayed it until they threatened me with my hospital privileges being canceled uh -huh. So for fear of losing my job, I was forced to get the vaccine. That is all because of um, Governor Newsom. Wow. Oh. And me speaking about it on Instagram, on Twitter, there at the time was a, Cal there still is a California law that threatens doctors with having your medical license canceled if you spread COVID misinformation. Wow. <laughs> yes. And COVID misinformation meant anything that did not agree with what they were saying. Oh, it's like Russia's Pravda. 
Right. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, yeah, it's, it's like, it's like communist propaganda. Yeah. So that is why. So yes, I was forced to take the booster. Oh. I did not like that. I will never again. I will. And I got very ill after the booster. Huh. Um, I just, I got, um, I got autoimmune all my, on my fingers. I just got all these uh, red bumps, these red painful bumps that probably lasted about a week or two. So I, I had an autoimmune reaction um, from it. So I said, you know, next time if I, you know, if it's get the booster or lose my job, I will lose my job. I will figure out what to do. Right now, as we speak, they're saying that another set of COVID, uh, coming. Yeah. The, 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 uh, they're saying that there's another wave of COVID coming right. that you, you know, cause you're in the medical field. Uh, so I, you, you say, I know, um, there is not another wave of COVID coming, not what that means. So in the hospital, in the ICU this past week, I had three patients. Uh -huh. None of them was sick because of COVID, uh -huh. but they had their nose tested and the test showed that they had COVID, but they were considered COVID patients. Oh, okay. So <laughs> one of these three patients died. And when I fill that death certificate, I will not write that they died because of COVID, but I can't control what the other things say. So when they say the COVID cases are rising, people in the hospital for many different reasons are yeah. there. If you test them, they have COVID inside their nose, but very few patients are actually there because of COVID. Huh. Okay. And the departments of health, the governments that want to twist this, mm -hmm to their advantage, yeah. unfortunately, are going to do so. Yeah. But I am here to tell you from within the walls of a hospital, yes, there are patients whose tests show that they have COVID, but they are not there because of COVID. Okay. Yeah. What can you tell the medical field to do? Because everyone is scared of losing their job. Everyone's scared of uh, this thing happen again. And uh, a lot of my friends who, who are nurses and doctors, they're just like, ah, I'll just go along with it. I'll just take the shot. I don't want to lose my job. I got mortgage. Yeah. Even police. Yeah, police, yeah. a veteran. Right. Uh, veterans already retired. <laughs> the military guys. The firefighter. Yeah. Yeah. They are basically forced to do it. What can they do? Is there anything they can do to stop these oppression from the government? So what I would recommend to people, anybody who like me is a physician, a nurse, a respiratory therapist, even anybody who is, you know, in a field where you're required to get the COVID vaccine. It is a personal choice. Number one, if you want to get it, go for it. However, nobody should force it upon you. This is your decision. If we all say this is my decision, I refuse to have somebody force it upon me. They cannot fire us all. They cannot get rid of us all. The system would collapse. So what I would tell people is I am here. To say that I will never do this again, okay, as far as being something forced on me. And I encourage people, if we stand up together, we are the entirety of the population. They cannot do this to us. So that is what I would tell them. There is power in numbers. There are a lot of us. You are not alone. You are not alone. You can say no if somebody's going to force something on you against your will. Now, there's a lot of problem in California right now. A lot of problems within this state right now or our country is in huge problem which problems stand out to you the most and what's your way to deal with it and to solve this for us so when i talk to voters a few problems come up consistently crime mm -hmm. homelessness mm -hmm. the economy and inflation yeah number four parents rights Yes. Number five, education and the low quality education children are receiving in public school. Okay. So those are really the big five. Other people uh, also say number six, the border, you know, people just coming in, immigrants, drugs just coming in. Number seven, the fentanyl crisis, more drugs, children having unintentional overdoses. They think that they're doing, you know, uh, uh, mild drugs with their friends and stuff. And then there's fentanyl. They don't know it suddenly they are accidentally overdosing and killed. So those are really the ones that matter. Now there's also, you know, the, the war in Ukraine. Um, we have, you know, Joe Biden and the impeachment. Transgender. Re tra yes, tra transgender, but that's also with, goes with parents' rights. Okay. But what really matters day to day with people is 
you know, their bills are expensive. Their groceries are expensive. Gas. I can't remember the last time that I don't ever, I, I've never seen gas this expensive. Um, but also, yes, with transgender. Listen, if adults want to do with themselves what they want to do, that is fine. They are adults. I don't control what you do. You don't control what I do. However, when you start forcing that on children, mm -hmm. when you start excluding the parents, when you start keeping secrets, that is not okay. Okay, that is not okay. So yeah, that is why parents' rights and also education, the things that they're teaching them in school, the things that they're not teaching them in school, reading, writing, math, science, mm -hmm. right? Things that get you skills, job skills, to start your own business, to be a productive person. Kids aren't learning that anymore. Mm -hmm. They can tell you the nine different genders that they have to choose from, but they couldn't tell you what 12 times 12 is. From your opinion, yeah. because we met this school board meeting. Yes. Is Glendale doing okay? Like their school program no. and everything? No. No? No. So my high school, Hoover High School. So I, I went to public school. So I am a product of the Glendale public school system, right? <laughs> I made something of myself because the quality of education, my sister also, she was public schools. You know, the majority of my cousins went to public schools in Glendale. It was a good school system. Mm -hmm. Now, only 24% of graduating high schoolers can do basic math. How basic? How basic? They probably cannot read a credit card statement or balance a checkbook. This is why there's so many people in debt. Uh -huh. Because when they make their monthly payments, for example, on mm -hmm. the credit cards, how much is going to interest? How much is going to principal? I mean, when I was in school, it said, if you take a loan for $10,000 uh -huh. and the interest, compound interest is 3% per month, how much interest do you pay in a year? We were forced to calculate those in a word problem. They are not doing those. Or if they do, only 24% of students are able to do that. Oh. So no, Glendale is not in a good position. Only 24% of students can do basic math. But this is exactly what the politicians and the governments and the big banking corporations want. They want to create slaves that are beholden to the governments and their handouts that are beholden to the banks and the debt because they can't read their credit card and they work so hard and they pay $300 a month, maybe 295 of that is going to interest yeah. and only $5 is to the principal and they're just going to be under in debt for the rest of their lives. So you think that education is a huge problem just in California or the whole United States? And what's your plan to solve it once you get in there? So every immigrant who comes to this country, right? What do they tell their children? They terrorize their children. My mother terrorized Study me. Study right? hard. Study hard. <laughs> yes. Open your book. Do your homework, yeah. right? Education. But also, educated people cannot be kept down Yes. Mm -hmm. in life, but also by the government, right? Ignorant people, uneducated people, you can keep down. So I think they are intentionally doing this. What would my plan be? So funny you should ask. So when I go to Congress, one of my first laws that I will author is I want to get money for a pilot program for my school. So the elementary, junior high, and high schools are all within 100 feet of each other. Okay, The math scores are terrible. So I would like to get pilot project funding to start doing accelerated math starting in the elementary schools. Okay. So that by six years later, by the time they get into high school, they have math skills. They are able, for example, to do software engineering, AI, coding. We have two or three large companies in Glendale founded by local people that do internet and are getting into AI, artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. So I would like to get a pilot program where we actually teach children marketable skills. Math, yes, you're going to be a nerd, but you're going to have a great job and there's going to be so many opportunities for you. And even the students who cannot do it, for example, you still can get trades, for example, electricians, right? Yes, you're going to build all these electric-friendly homes. You're going to build all these charging stations. The engineers, the computer engineers will design them. Who's going to build them? Mm -hmm. You still need electricians. So it's not just that we're going to say, okay, we're going to create one type of person. Math and science, you have so many opportunities available to you, and they are not teaching those or they are not stressing them. So I would like to have that pilot project where I go. I'm actually going to go to the school board meeting tomorrow. Mm -hmm. oh. And last time I was there, when you all were there, I yeah. called them failures mm -hmm. because the math scores have gone down over, over 10 or 15 years. I'm going to remind them of their failures, and then I'm going to propose my idea. I can get funding from Congress, but the schools are going to have to build a program. So it's going to be a partnership. What I can do in Washington 
is say, hey, look, this is our plan. It's a pilot so that we can educate kids, create innovation back home where we used to innovate. Use it as a pilot for the rest of the state, the rest of the country. We say, this can work. Please, let's try it here. And then in five years, 10 years, when we actually produce smarter kids who are innovating once again, then you can say, okay, now the United States can be a major power again because we can bring back innovation. We can bring back development to our kids, to our people. Hmm. Do you think that right now America is not innovative country right now? No, we are not an innovative. I mean, when I say innovative country, um, you know, I work up in the Bay Area near uh, Cupertino, near uh, Silicon Valley. The tech companies are bringing in 40,000 visa workers every year. Mm. 40,000. Yeah. yeah. That's a lot of people. Why do you need to import them? Why aren't you able to find those people here? I get it. Sometimes you just want people who think differently. But 40,000 people just for tech? Why are we not creating that here? So, and I think we are frighteningly, terrifyingly dependent upon China, right? For not only our manufacturing, but also our ores, right? Lithium, precious metals for our cars, for batteries, everything. So I think the faster that we're able to bring all of that back here under our own roof so that we are not fearful because if China says, okay, I'm going to stop this. I'm going to ruin your economy because I'm going to stop all the things you're importing. Suddenly they have blackmail over us. They have some make it hold over us. But if we're able to do that here and they say, okay, we're going to stop it. We say, fine, we can manage by ourselves. We don't have that. And that is frightening for national security. From my opinion, I've been pushing homeschool uh -huh. to our audience. Yep. I'm like, no public education. We cannot trust the government. Mm -hmm. Government should stay out of it. Our kids, our problem, our glory to love our kids with right. all our heart. And the government should stay away. What's your thought on that? So that's a great option on paper, but in practice, it's difficult for several reasons. Number one, some parents are working, both parents are working, and they cannot afford to take off, especially in this economy, which is why people are saying, okay, well, I pay property taxes for schools. Why can I not get money if I'm doing homeschooling? Because a lot of parents right now, they cannot get any money for homeschooling. That, that's a good thing. Can you take away the property tax? Because, yes. Because the property tax, mm -hmm. it's not there until the war 1812. Okay. Before that, Americans don't have to pay property tax. Right. It was until that time they go like, oh, we need to pay for the wars, yep, yep. so we need to get our property tax. Yep. And after that, it just stayed. Mm -hmm. we, after we pin finished the debt, we just kept property tax. Right. Oh, now we can build school. Uh -huh. The truth is, I don't care about the school. I want to educate my kid. I want to save my tax dollar for my kids, right. not for the school that's trying to indoctrinate them. So is it possible that Congress can write a law say that no more property tax that is not possible why because if congress says okay we're not going to have mm -hmm. an income tax anything the local governments can do it mm -hmm. okay oh. so your idea again again sounds great on paper but in practice there are a lot of things so for example when you talked about the church right uh, yeah so when he talks about let's have these people help out so people who aren't religious for example there are people who make a lot of money are good people good neighbors live in a big house and then maybe three streets down in the same school district you have five families that live in an apartment complex because they don't have enough money okay so you as a good neighbor you say you know i have a lot of disposable income we're all going to create a good school i will pay my property taxes and so everybody will benefit from a school and that is kind of how you have that benevolent charity and rich people don't think like that come on <laughs> don't correct. lie to yourself so, correct but if, if, if rich people don't think like that then and then if you don't have taxes on everybody then can you guarantee that jeff bezos or bill gates will give their money to support schools no right so unless there is that tax that people have to pay then you actually have that minimum uh, amount of money that funds public works, for example. But getting back to your question, I would like to avoid this movement for homeschooling. Why? I am a proud product of public schools, and I am proof that public schools work when they are done correctly. So rather than focusing on a movement where the people who have intelligence, people who have resources can take their children out uh -huh. and save themselves, I'm thinking of the entire population. There are parents who aren't that educated, but want better for their children and yeah. can't give them good curriculum at home. There are parents 
who work really hard, but again, because they're not educated, are in jobs that don't pay well, but they say, my child is gonna go to school, is gonna go to public schools, get an education, will get a better job than me, and will be you know, a, a richer person than me. That is the American dream, right? So I prefer, if people want to homeschool because public schools now are terrible, my solution would be, let us fix the public schools, let us fix the curriculum, let us elect people to the school board who will then make it better so that people say, oh, hey, I want my child to be in a school with other kids and be social. I know that they're going to get a good quality education because now we have these new school board members who will implement that good curriculum. And also my child will have good social skills because he or she is going to be with other children and will learn how to be a good person. I think that's very good to hear. But you know, like... I don't trust those people, you know, and like it's very hard on the election. You know, you can run for school board, for example, yeah. you can run for school board. Yeah. So this is also what I want to do to people. I am a physician. I am working my full time job while I working my full time job. I'm running my campaign. It is possible. It is possible for real people with yeah. real jobs to do this. So also, I want to take this opportunity to inspire people. Yeah. I don't want you to run away and create your own community by yourself and your family. If you are this passionate. Run for school board, fix it, do it. You can, you have the right. I get it. But what about the teacher, you know, mm -hmm. like people in the school board, but there's a lot, also a lot of teachers that are in school. Uh -huh. And now they are the product of brainwashed communism mm -hmm. in their brain. So for now, like for example, if we're going to the school board say, hey, what are you teaching to our children, right? Yeah. I want to get the curriculum. They don't give you the curriculum. Correct. Yeah, uh, you, you can just ask, uh, do you teach like LGBTQ? They say, yes, what can you do, right? Mm -hmm. Now, I will say, uh, maybe this sounds like childish, but I will say there's a lot of bad people in the school and mm -hmm. they're being teacher and they're also brainwashed. Mm -hmm. They don't think they're doing bad things. They think I'm doing great thing, right. but they are the product of the communism brainwashed and now they're going to the public school. We don't have control in those people. And now you can see the teachers union. They are just doing horribly to harm our children. So I think that's a huge industry that it cannot be solved by uh, like, if you have more like regulation or something mm -hmm. that- And I yeah. also disagree yeah. that building your own community is mm -hmm. a bad thing. Cause I think with parents, for example, I don't get a chance to hang out with other parents. Mm -hmm. I don't get a chance to hang out with other family. But through a homeschool program, the neighbor can get together. There's a community. We care about each other. I know them. They know me. And then uh, we create a community that is strong, who's protecting children. I think that is a stronger community than a public school, which parents don't know each other. Why don't we fix that? All these problems happened. Because people were asleep. When I say people were asleep, mm -hmm. I was working my job, right? I was not engaged. Yeah. People were not engaged. COVID was, yes, the lockdowns were terrible, but they were an amazing opportunity to open people's eyes. Yes. Because parents who were normally so busy yeah. and disengaged with everything were at home. Mm -hmm. Their kids were at home. And then they said, hang on a minute. What are you learning? When did this happen? It happened while we were living our lives. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have a lot of energy that they want to invest in things. And again, I'm at least 15 years older than both of you. Uh, <laughs> maybe, no, not, maybe, maybe not, maybe not, maybe not. Maybe not. So, no, we're, we're ages, I know, true, look younger. True. But it's just, you know, when I went to school, my parents were engaged and my mother went to back to school nights. I'm glad you said that because when uh -huh. you say that, when you said I am a good product of public school, the first thing I thought is like, no. You are a good product because you have good parents. Correct. Yeah. Don't take that honor away from your parents and give Correct. it to a school that don't care about you. <laughs> but does the, your principal remember your name? My principal may or may not remember. My, my, <laughs> my, my principal retired when I was in, in 11th grade. Donald, well, I bet your Donald mom does. does. <laughs> she, she does but my, oh, so one of my first donations uh -huh. was from my 8th grade math teacher, Mr. Hovsepi. He remembered me and he gave me a donation. Wow. Oh, really? Yes. yes from Toll uh -huh. Junior High, you remember me. So no, I did make those connections with my teachers. So I think what is missing now mm -hmm. is, you know, we were talking about this. 
Parents terrorizing their children to do well. Teachers terrorizing their students to do well. It's not terror in a malicious way. It's terror like you need to do this. You need to be a smart person, a well-educated person to be good in life. We need to bring that back. Mm -hmm. And, you know, right now I, th I say I say teachers should be partners and not partitions mm -hmm. because right now teachers are being partitions. And I agree with you when you say the teachers unions, but I also know teachers. The majority of teachers do not agree with their union bosses. The majority of teachers do not want to discuss all of these things that are being handed down from Sacramento. Mm -hmm. The majority of teachers want to talk to parents and want to be open with parents. But we are being taken over by a loud fringe minority in the unions, the teachers unions, in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. So again, it's you want to take your resources and kind of build your small communities. But if we come together, elect different people. Do not reelect these liberals in Sacramento. Mm -hmm. Elect somebody like me who is conservative, right? Don't spend more than you take in, right? Don't start unnecessary wars. Be a productive, educated person. Like those kinds of things. Be a respectful neighbor. And if instead of isolating ourselves or saying, okay, my street, my neighbors, if we come together as a community, as a city and say, we're going to send good quality people with values, conservative values to Sacramento to change all the laws that did this, right? When I was growing up, we didn't have these laws. Mm -hmm. All these laws came about in the last 20 years. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. So when I was growing up there, it wasn't here. Why? Because people elected a certain kind of person. And then in the last 20 years, people just turned off. They became distracted. And then these others, this fringe minority of people, they started coming in and suddenly they're controlling the conversation everywhere. Mm -hmm. We're asking ourselves, what happened? How did we get here? To summarize my candidacy, again, I am Dr. Alex Balekian, born and raised in Glendale, lifelong resident here, running for California's 30th district. I am fiscally conservative, socially moderate. I believe in smaller governments, lower taxes, taking control out of the government's hands and into the household, into the family's hands, being a good neighbor, being respectful, being educated, welcoming hardworking people, immigrants and native born Americans, just so we can make a good quality country again, the way we knew it to be. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thank you. Alex. Can you remind me your Balekian. 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 Okay. Balekian. 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 Thank you for coming. Of yeah, course. We have such an amazing time just to exchange our ideas. Yeah. 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 My we pleasure. Don't, we don't agree on everything, but that's okay. Yeah. That's, yeah, okay. that's okay because right. we have a ground to talk about that. Right. You know, like a lot of like radical people, they don't want to talk. Uh, those kind of things. So you're but uneducated. You're stupid. <laughs> right. <laughs> That's call, so bad. And they yeah. call names. You know, I, I'm, I'm very glad. And this is exactly what I say. Yeah. We're not going to agree 100%. And even if I agree with you 85%, it's better than the people who currently agree with you 0%. <laughs> and that is why we need to get together. We're not going to agree 100%, but we need to figure out a common ground that we have and make this place better. Yeah. 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 He's better than Adam Schiff. Yeah. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. All right. Thank you guys for watching. Uh, my name is Ethan. This is Felicia. And Alex. And uh, we'll see you guys next time. Bye. Bye.